What's going on, everybody in the VC? Craig here with my contest entry, thread entry into Memphis Final Gym and the Mississippi's One Two Punch uh, contest thread. Uh, first off, great to see you guys back. Always love catching your videos. Obviously, not able to make them as frequent as you used to, but could see plenty of posts on the Facebook page. And always love talking with you guys. Love vibing. Love you guys. But I've said that a million times. And I can, it never gets old. Love watching your videos. So, and this is probably my favorite idea for a contest thread yet. All of them so far that I've done have been great, but this one really made me think. And after seeing LJ's video and seeing uh, Brandon, Mr. Hall of Fame's video, I'm like, all right, I gotta jump in on this because if I don't, they're gonna, everybody else is just gonna beat me on all the ones. Every time I watch their video, I'd be thinking, I'm like, oh man, this would be a great one. And then they're showing it. And I'm like, damn, really? But it just shows we think on the same lines. So, tried to think up a few that were kind of close to me. Tried to leave some out that either were not exactly on par, that I didn't think were, you know, good one-two punches, like what's playing in the background, for instance. Skid Row, their self-titled album. First album. Now, I almost considered this for a one-two punch, A, because I love both of their albums, self-titled and their sophomore release, Slave to the Grind. But, A, I don't have Slave to the Grind on vinyl. I really wanted to keep this just strictly vinyl. And also, um, I almost, the, I loved this album growing up, like I played it to death. But the moment I listened to Slave to the Grind, I'm kind of like, oh God, that one's almost taking first place for me. And it's so much heavier, but I think it's just, a little bit different songwriting and different production and them really going from okay being a part of the times to being ahead of the time. It's kind of like, all right, we're going from okay, we're a part of the hair metal thing to a degree. And then the next album, it's like, all right, now we're like punching you in the gut. It's like if uh, it almost reminds me kind of like if uh, Guns N' Roses and Metallica fused together, like Appetite for Destruction and like maybe some of the earlier Metallica work and stuff, with more of like a punk influence, because you can definitely tell their punk roots in there. But anyway, that's a kind of good one-two punch, but I just wanted to stay away from it because I wanted to stay in vinyl. So, BC Cheer. Hope everybody's doing well. And let's get right into it. Uh, first one up. Now, I know some people are probably gonna disagree, but I kinda went with stuff that really like from my childhood really impacted me and stuff like that. Like on first listen, I'm kinda like, oh yeah. So my first one-two punch, Aerosmith. Their self-titled first album. And their sophomore release, Get Your Wings. Now, Get Your Wings being just a little bit grittier than the first album, but both of these, play them back to back, and it's almost uh, like, it almost just plays like one continuous kind of like, kind of like you're uh, you're at band practice, you're working on a song, and you've got you're fleshing it out in the beginning, and you're working on those riffs, and by the end, so start it out with make it on here, and you end it off with Pandora's box on here, and you're kind of like, all right, we fleshed out the tune, the tune is fucking done, and we're ready to go. I mean, this play is literally kind of like one continuous thing. It just gets grittier and grittier. And you know, I mean, I know most people would probably say out of their 70s output and overall on an Aerosmith kick, you'd want to play Toys in the Attic and Rocks back to back. These two play just as great for me. And I mean, that's totally my opinion, but this is such a solid, solid first album. And I mean, what better way to start off an album than, you know, with Make It. You know, good evening people, welcome to the show. Yeah. You know you're in for a ride on the Aerosmith train. So. And this album, totally sick. I mean, Woman of the World, Lord of the Thighs, Space, same old song and dance. I mean, side one, brutal. And then you got Seasons of Wither, SOS Train, Kept Rolling, Pandora's Box, and side two. I know I'm jumbling up the track listing, but this, both albums, 
solid. Alright, so, Aerosmith. Next one. I went with, I went with the Southern vibe here. Almond Brothers Band, so, their first album. And I don't have, uh, out of wild uh, south on as a single disc, but I do have it here on their beginnings uh, release, which has both the first album and the second album packaged together. But anyway, in my opinion, the basis and beginnings of Southern Rock of what it became. I mean, if there was no Almond Brothers, I don't know. I mean, I really don't. I firmly believe that I don't think we would have what Southern Rock became and started out as without the Allman Brothers really founding the basis. I mean, the beginnings of Skinner were happening, you know, when these albums were coming out anyway, so it's not like, you know, Skinner, you know, didn't exist, you know, they were building their foundation, but I think with this foundation of, you know, this album, the follow-up, we wouldn't have Southern Rock. That's just my opinion. And they're both solid, solid albums and play just right back to back. And I mean, the best way to, you know, cap that bottle is with Fillmore East, but those first two studio albums, whew, yeah. All right, continuing on in the, uh, in the 70s world, a good one-two punch in my opinion. Bad Company, their self-titled debut and Straight Shooter, their follow-up. Both great, solid, solid 70s rock at its best, in my opinion. I mean, almost all these songs off both albums are played on classic rock radio all the time. I mean, mainly, almost this entire album is played on classic rock radio. And obviously, you hear Good Loving Gone Bad, Feel Like Making Love, and Shooting Star all for this album, but I mean, there's great songs like Deal With The Preacher, Anna. This is a great album. Both albums, solid, solid releases. And Paul Rogers, man, one of my favorite vocalists from that period. All right, kind of moving out of the Southern Rock, hard rock vibe, switch gears over to The Cars. Their self-titled debut. And then their follow-up. Candio. Both of these, I mean, literally play like the Cars Greatest Hits, practically. At least, you know, in my opinion. This whole album you'll hear on Classic Rock Radio, no problem. I think, mean, minus, uh, you know, I'm in touch with your world, I've heard every song on the radio. And this, uh, and Candio, I mean, it's almost like they you kind of, uh, it's like you got the greatest hits with the first album, and then you get like the deeper cuts on Candio, and like really like, okay, we're gonna take what we do best with our songwriting and flush it out and kind of get a little experimental with it to a degree. I mean, really, they just got totally experimental with Panorama, but this one, I mean, you got Let's Go, It's All I Can Do, Double Life, Candio, Night Spots, which is one of my favorite Cars songs, Dangerous Type, Sour. Solid, solid. So come out of the box with both of these. And I mean, most of these songs were all written kind of around the same time period. I mean, I know while they were touring the first album, they already had songs like Candio, uh, Double Life, Night Spots, Dangerous Type that they were playing live. So they play perfectly well together. All right, let's go with another one-two punch here. Switch back, go back in time a little bit. Jimi Hendrix Experience, Are You Experienced? And the follow-up, Axis Bulb is Love. Now these, I mean, you can't deny the power of how good the songs are on both of these albums. I mean, this is all, I mean, we're all familiar with these. Purple Haze, Hey Joe, Foxy Lady, Fire, Wind Cries Mary. You know, all the songs on here, great. And then you can go just a little bit deeper with this album. Castles Made of Sand, uh, Bold as Love, If Six Was Nine, Wait Until Tomorrow. Both. Just solid, solid releases. And I mean, 
who can deny the power of Hendrix as a whole, guitar playing, songwriting, whatever. You know, these are classics, and there's a good reason why you know almost every household has something Hendrix related in their collection. Good reason. Another gear switcher here. Now, I'm surprised I really didn't see these, and I mean, this one gets a little questionable just because the production is a little bit different and it just sounds a little different. But in my opinion, you don't have one without the other. Black Sabbath, self-titled, their debut, and the follow-up, Paranoid. Now, obviously, Paranoid being a little bit more refined, the song range is a little bit more concise. You know, with all, with, you know, War Pigs, Paranoid, Iron Man, Bears Wear Boots. You know, we all we all know this album, but you don't get that two punch without the first punch, and this lays the groundwork for it and just hits you right away. I mean, I've heard this album so many times, but yet every time I hear the intro to Black Sabbath, I just I'm still like. Just, punched right there, you know, and I'm scared shitless too, like, like, fuck, this is, you're in for a hellish ride, you know, but, perfect albums, in my opinion. Alright, next one, alright, kind of, same vein, sort of, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, and their follow-up. Rising. Now, Richie Blackmore's band, post Deep Purple, first major, you know, commercial success really for uh, Ronnie James Dio on vocals. And this is just, yeah, what a way to start out. I mean, this whole album could literally just be Man on the Silver Mountain, and that's it. And it would be a guttural punch, but I mean, You've got some really great songs on here. Catch the Rainbow, Snake Charmer, uh, Still I'm Sad. You know, uh, I can name off the entire track listing and it's just like, ooh, one after the other, really, really solid stuff. And if that wasn't enough of a punch to kind of get you about to fall to the ground, Rising puts you on the ground and just kicks you right in the gut. So, I mean, this whole album, front to back, from the beginning of Terror Woman all the way to the end of A Light in the Black, bar none. Just smooth, solid, great, great release, and a killer follow-up. You know, another way I looked at this was like, okay, you've got that one-two punch, obviously, and they both like really strong albums and go together, you know, on the punching, but like, do they really flow well together? Is it a, this progression? Like, the first album really hit you, but the second one, like, knocked you out. Like, you don't have, you know, that one-two punch, you're, like, you're wanting that knockout. You don't want to be like, punched once, punched twice, and like, okay, it got me, but it didn't like, put me down on the ground. That's how I looked at it. If I was to play these albums back to back, and by the end, am I gonna be completely just down for the count? And that's how I looked at it. Doesn't matter, you know, I'm not looking at the punch out being the amount of heaviness, about the musicianship, about the lyrics, you know, every level, even like down to the artwork even. I'm looking at some of these and going, well, you know, because with vinyl, it's not only about what you're hearing, it's about what you're seeing. And finally, switching gears completely, one of my favorite bands of all time, Talking Heads, their first album, Talking Heads 77. And then their follow-up, their first album with uh, Brian Eno at the helm. More songs about buildings and food. Now, this one knocks me out every time I listen to it. I love the songs on this album. Primarily, my favorites off of here, Uh Oh, Love Comes to Town. Um, I love Tentative Decisions. I love New Feeling. Or really, like, Side 2 is really where I get some, like, my favorites of Don't Worry About the Government, Psycho Killer, and Pulled Up. But I love this album, Back to Front. From the first time I ever heard this album, about a good nine, ten years ago, first time I ever heard this album, maybe even longer than that. Just 
floored me. I'm like, wow. And I mean, that's a band that made a natural progression into whole different realms throughout their entire catalog. And continuing on, you've really got the Talking Heads 77 Part 2, but with Brian Eno. And obviously, this album would be nothing without Taking to the River, in my opinion. I mean, like, this album is great, but that song really just, when you're getting right to the end and right before big, the big country, oh yeah, perfect. Perfect album. Love, love the Talking Heads. I'm totally biased. I mean, I love their entire catalog, but really, those two, I love playing them back to back because they just work so well together and just. Once again, the natural progression thing of from the beginning of track one of the first album to the last track on the second album, you're just watching the progression and you're just perpetually just getting knocked harder and harder. I kind of look at that like uh, Jim and the Misses um, throughout uh, the band, Big Pink and then their self-titled Brown album uh, as their one-two punch. I kind of look at that in a similar vein. Like Big Pink really was like the beginning and like there was, you know, they'd been playing together so long so they were a really tight band but you had all these killer, killer songs and then to follow that up with the self-titled, forget about it. I mean, whew. and those albums, and it's just like that natural progression thing again, you know, from the beginning of just kind of, you know, like it's almost, it's like, okay, here they are in this house and they're, you know, you kind of get this picture painted of like they're in just sort of you know, out in the wilderness in this house type of thing, you know, and playing it and just jamming out these songs. Whereas with the Brown album, you, know, you, you open up the gatefold and you see them kind of, you know, picture of them in the studio and it's like, what I mean, it's recorded in the house, but I mean, that's out in California and just the essence of everything and you get this vibe from it and just really gets you. So, there you go. So, now that I'm winded and done rambling, there's my entry into the contest. Hope you guys all enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.